Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogwood333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, The New Order, Last Days of Europe. Well, don't surf, beta. As the Union of South Africa. Now, last video, we finally took out the rebellious Boer Republic, and are currently pushing up towards the, um, Reich Commissariats to our north. Trying to see how far we can get now. We have quite a few, um, quite a few events to read and catch up on. It, um, it's been a while. Not a while. It's been like 12 hours since last time I uh, picked this up and started recording. So, I, I, I more or less remember where I was at, but still, gonna, it's gonna be good to get back. I'll actually, I'll set this 25 minutes. All of these parts go a bit longer than they usually do. Through eyes clouded by tears, the boar gazed upon his tormentors. A pair of young men, red hair oiled back, sleeves rolled up, hard eyes. He braced himself for what he knew was coming. Now that he had woken, the torture began anew. One of the men punched him full force in the stomach and the chest over and over again as the other watched, asking questions he didn't know the answers to. After a time, the torturer went to wash his hands clean while the boar spat blood onto concrete floors. It glistened in the harsh yellow glare of a so of a sodium light. Hmm. Next came the pliers. He was determined not to scream, but his resolve broke immediately as the frowning torturer ripped out his thumbnail. The question er, the questioner continued his monotone drone, speaking in the African hands of one who had not been born of it. Where they wh where were they? How many were there? Where were the supplies coming from? All the boar could say was that he did not know, but they were not satisfied. After his remaining fingernails were lying on the floor in pools of blood, the torturer went to work on his teeth. After time, the boar awoke. He wondered how much time had passed in the dank, stinking cellar. The torturer wheeled a car battery forward and attached jumper cables to it, then clipped the clamps to his nipples. Ooh, kinky. The boar felt electricity light his brain up like a Christmas tree. For a moment, the shock was so strong he didn't even feel the pain. But it came. Oh, it came. When he proved once again unable to answer questions, the torturer swapped the clamps to his testicles. Eventually, morning came, and now in Cape Town, down by the docks, a nondescript door opened. A young man with slick black red hair walked outside onto the dim sunlight. Rolling his shoulders and stretching his neck, behind him he awkwardly dragged a garbage bag, the contents sloshing around with every step. He heaved it into an already overflowing dumpster and, shielding his eyes from morning's bright light, made his way back inside. Soon, they would be bringing in the next prisoner. The light is not for those men. Jesus. And we got, um, Oost Afrikaner booby threats detonate in Mapupo, Maputo. Recent reports from a front state, uh, from a front state that our successful capture of Maputo has been damaged with widespread causes of sabotage. Ooh. Our forces report various items and areas have been mined or booby trapped, including enemy weapons, homes, and their own dead and wounded, including our own in extreme cases. This is extremely disturbing and has caused several casualties and deaths among our forces. From a strategic, a strategic standpoint, the larger concerns of the East African force seems to be attempting to destroy any usable infrastructure as they retreat in an attempt to delay our advance. Bridges have been blown over various rivers. Roads and trails have been mined, especially the common dirt ones that many find in East Africa. And the few paved roads are usually cratered. This scorched earth tactic has been a major part of East Africa in defensive strategy, says intelligence. By depriving the South African army of anything useful, they hope to eventually slow and choke off the attack and leave our forces vulnerable to a counterattack to, char to change the path of war. The infrastructure or destruction is not a tactic of desperation, according to intelligence. Rather, they believe the area around Maputo has been mined since before the war. Regardless, we are moving engineers and bridging units to the area to fix the infrastructure. Our anti-mine units and bomb squads are attempting to defuse any other booby traps that have yet to detonate. The men are still in good spirits and we plan to continue the push to push the enemy back and keep them there. They will make us struggle for every inch of their land. Indeed. Well, we're coming up on 82,000 men dead, sadly. But, we're still beating them back. We actually uh, might just take Windhoek coming up soon, which is going to be f interesting. 
We'll do that right now. Um, hmm. Our economy is not doing too hot right now. All right, we got uh, took back not quite all of our starting territory, but a fair bit of it. So let's develop uh, Buchuan Roads, and then the fact's kind of pissed off at us anyway. So I don't know how much it matters. Um. Hmm. What do we want to do? Let's let's purchase some guns. Might as well. Oop. Um, looks like the same kind of uh, deal in Rommel Shot. Same focus. The fall of Windhoek. Today, the Afghan shield suffers a serious blow. Despite constant aerial bombings from increasingly desperate defenders, the South African army, supported by elements of the OFN coalition, have taken Winhoek, administrative center of the Reich Commissariat, Sudwest Africa. After almost a day of furious fighting, the central compound of the colonial government was the last sector of the city to fall, as almost 200 soldiers, supported by a battalion of the native SS, had bunkered in the heavy fortified buildings, forcing the American troops to clear the underground corridors and booby-trapped halls with flamethrowers and military engineers. The last weeks had seen the combined Allied troops inflicting defeat after defeat against the Reich Commissariat, steadily gaining ground against a weakened and demoralized opponent. But this might be the turning point for the war. With the fall of Winhoek, the shield has lost its largest airfields, and large supplies, fuel, and airplane parts have been seized by the attackers before the Germans could retreat. Reich Commissariat Schenk has managed to flee the city on his personal fighter, and in his first statement he has warned to bring the German flag to Winhoek. But with the Western Front in disarray array and the Shield troops still retreating, many doubt whether he'll be able to keep faith to his word. And yet the war goes on. So nice war support, stability, and PP. I will take that right now. Up Francis Town. Oh. Goes the economic war. Out with a crash indeed. Uh, Francis Town, same idea. Looks like. Yeah. Uh, Gaza. It's about to. S <sighs> I'm curious what, um, uh. What Schenk has gotten up to. Hmm. Right. Um, Shanks, um... I've been doing a little bit of... Re I want to look at these focus trees real quick. Um... Shanks and uh, Sudwest Africa's focus tree is actually pretty interesting because um, they actually, uh, Shank wants to, um, you know, by the end of war he f realizes, you know what, um, this is kind of fucked. I don't know if I want to be part of this anymore. So he works to make Angola a independent nation, which is pretty nifty. Then you have um, Mueller, who has to deal with a bunch of uh, clusterfucks and just kind of figure out how to do a lot of Merc stuff. And then Hutig is um, definitely the, uh, hungry, uh, the bloodthirsty one. In fact, um, you know, I'll wait until the um, I'll wait until the war is over before I bring it up because um, remember when I first saw a little event that happens depending on um when you finish the war. Ooh, 
That, uh, screwed me up. War as hell indeed. But yeah, we're just beating them back. It's, it's not even... Oh god, those frames are dropping. Oh, Nixon is gone! Ooh. Alright, I had a focus I needed to do. Um, let's just work on women in the military. In the workplace of gender equality, and then ban from service with military assistance. So more population. I believe now we can go ahead... We need surrender process, okay. I got you. What cost? So, do you really think this is gonna work? I mean, shit. Something like this against a tank? Triggs asked, af acting semi-informal for his rank as a private, but no one minded of this depth of a jungle. Triggs, think I fucking know. Look, the captain's great at this shit. We've been pulling out off hot shots against some of the meanest German fucks in South Africa. Who's to say that this isn't gonna work? It's a bomb with a fuckload of sharp shit put in. If the explosion doesn't kill him, there's and the steel doesn't kill him, you really th you think a bunch of guys just lost their Achilles tendons are really gonna be able to gonna be that hard to put down? Sarge said, as eloquent as ever. The squad shook their heads as we got ready to present the captain. Looking over a small ridge of a captain has binoculars glued to the truck and the tank that was rolling through the African dirt road. Um, Captain, sir, the bomb's ready. Packed and ready to shred whoever apart after 30 minutes of being placed, sir. Trigg said, a bit nervous, given the uh, bombasticness of a captain. Good work, Triggs. Now, everyone, get over here. You see those two? That's got a certain Major Carl Steiner in there, inside. Responsible for a good bit of the infantry coordination around these parts. Let's go pay a visit, gentlemen. It, it took some time of trekking through the jungle to make it, but finally the squad had made it with the trucks and the tank, ever more, the more clueless about their positions. Their plan was a go, the distraction was made, and the bomb was attached. Now it was just time for the men to wait, see, and follow the small, small, con nah, the small convoy as it made its way through the jungle. However, it wasn't until the village in the distance came into view that they realized what was happening. It was already too late in the captain's eyes as he'd raised a fist to hold the squad from moving forward. As soon as his fish, fist touched the sky, the, nah, his fist touched the sky. However, the bomb finally went off, sending a great fireball into the air and a shower of shrapnel all over the village. Men, women, and children screamed, finding the dead and bleeding all over, whilst Germans swarmed, punishing the village for what had happened. What have we done? Shit. Lupana. So we, um, we're in striking distance of Aquilamine. We're getting there. We just need to keep pushing a little bit more. Might just take a Salisbury. Um, not enough manpower to fill our garrisons. Yeah. Sounds like that might be an issue. Air assault, let's get working on that. Why not? The Battle of Salisbury. Today the war enters a new phase as the front has definitely shifted in favor of the OFN coalition. Salisbury, the largest settlement of the former British colony of Rhodesia, now part of Reich, Reich Commissariat East Africa, has fallen into the hands of the American-led coalition. The city was an important industrial center in the area and home to the command staff for that sector. Therefore, its capture is an important success against the Africa Shield. The city has been re well prepared for the siege with strong defenses and large ammunition supplies, but in the end, the enemy was too strong. One by one, the bunkers were busted by surgical artillery and aerial strikes, and the tanks moved in to seize the entrenched defenders still fighting. Slowly, the garrison fell inward to pre-prepared positions, but many of them, but they found many of them sabotaged or occupied by the partisans, who had been waiting for the right moment to strike. Many German soldiers were 
felled by a surprise burst of her own HMG, and the rest were crushed between the anvil and the hammer as the South African infantry launched its final offensive. Reich Commissariat Hans Hutig is reportedly disappointed by the failure to defend the city and has issued a conscription order to mobilize additional forces and retake the city as soon as possible. He has also threatened the occupying forces to abandon the city immediately or suffer the consequences of her hubris. Despite his boisterous claim, all observers agree that this is an important victory for Rio FN. Yet the war goes on. Well, let's see if we can't take the capital of East Africa. Really fun, uh, kicking their fucking teeth. We're managing so far. In fact, um, you go there. You you cr you still can cross the river, but ultra range training is probably gonna be good. We might want to go for that. Up Choma. The use of Craners are certainly putting up a fight. Oh god, the po oh. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Six million Germans, guys. The Quelamine Uprising, after a string of defeats suffered by the new mi Oh! What is that? rut -row. After a string of defeats suffered today by the numerically inferior East African colonial forces, today the easternmost at... African Reich Commissariat, and de facto a leader of the Africa Shield, was forced to take an even worse humiliation as it American forces entered Quilamine, the colony's administra administrative center, in the seat of power of Reich Commissar Hans Hutig. The city had been turned into a veritable stronghold with a ring of bunkers, trenches, minefields, and underground tunnels covering the entire perimeter in a hellish maze of interlocking firing zones. What the garrison couldn't expect, however, was the enemy from the inside, though it's unknown whether they took contact with the besieging army or if they acted on their own. Partisan movements all throughout the city's main many concentration camps and slave quarters launched a full-scale uprising, slaughtering their jailers and breaking free, spreading chaos and panic in the German quarters of the city. This distraction gave the attackers a perfect opportunity to strike, and despite taking every losses, they managed to dislodge the garrison from the outer bastions and enter the urban areas. The last sector to fall was a fortress complex of a central administration compound, which had been riddled with booty, booty, booty traps and death zones. Over 600 soldiers died to take the buildings from the few dozen of fanatical German SS barricaded there before military engineers and flamethrowers were sent in. Quillamin was a vital hub for the colony and hosted several industrial fun industries fundamental to the war effort. The Victoria's occupants were reportedly shocked by what they saw in the countless mining concentration camps and slave factories where tens of thousands of desperate men, women, and children lived in abject poverty and starvation. Many were moved to tears as some of the weakest ones died before their very eyes, crying of happiness for being free at last. Rash Commissariat Hutig managed to flee the city and has sworn to avenge the de defeat with the lives of all Americaner in the city, but some doubt the f factability of such a claim. Who is texting me? That is an, that's an email that I got on text, and that is a spam. That is spam. Dear God, that is not nice. I don't know if I can even block this. Oof. Uh, yeah, delete. Get me the fuck out of that conversation. Well, the war still goes on. Um, this is this is probably something we want to deal with real quick. Um, let me get back my timer. I can't imagine um, Hans is too happy about that. Um, you gotta go, you gotta love this, um, great focus, everyone is fucking useless. Um, shit. Let's see what they got. Um, surrounded by degeneracy, the unending war. A hundred for one. Just another camp. Uh. Wow, 
well at this point oh, might makes right Fedwell Leon and his merry band of executioners eh? the self-titled man asked his voice barely going over the noise of a truck they were in they were in the other man kept his eyes on the road, but shrugged. I don't know, sir. We're supposed to instill fear, but we, aren't we supposed to be disciplined, too? A merry band. Leon Ritt waved his hair and took a puff of his cigarette, taking the time to run a finger across his forehead. <sighs> Look, soldier. See those three back out there? He asked, pointing a thumb over himself. Tied up with a rope and bags over their heads, two white men and one black man sat on the back of a truck, flanked by two men in military uniforms who carried rifles with them. The driver didn't look back, only nodded. Yes, sir, he asked. The sergeant gave a man a single pound on the back. We'll show them both, son. Just follow my lead. With a shimmering, while the shimmering sea was beautiful, the truck sput uttering plumes of carbon monoxide and the South African soldiers getting shoved off a truck at Bayonet's point wasn't. May I ask you a question, Leon asked. Chief grazing against the skin of a cigarette before he threw it out and snuffed it underfoot. There's no answer as we continue moving towards the sea. Hmm. I see you don't speak the language of Victorious. He shook his head. None the matter. It was strangely accented and bordering on broken, but his English sufficed. I, I have a question. One of the men, a white man, spoke up. Y yes? What's your question? Why are you being led here? Leon asked a pointed look and a sharp smile. What do you mean? I'm asking why you are here, American. Well, he raised his voice. Give me an answer. As the captive and his friends were forced on their knees near the water, he froze up. B -b -b because we're being executed. Leon let out a la, a la, la, I can't, what the fuck? Why can I not read now? A loud, exaggerated chuckle. Exactly. My, you are sharp, Untermensch. It's a shame you're not on our side. He snapped his fingers and turned to his precious German. Thomas, no, no, Christian, ready your rifles. On the count of free will, we shall send these men to nothingness. Now, three, two, one, fire! Three gunshots ringed in the air. In the seconds afterwards, the smoke began clearing up, and what remained were three men aiming their rifles at the three men kneeling at the ground with water pulling near their knees. Leon's eyes flicked for captives who were shaking and tremor even, and then to his driver looked at Leon with surprise and hesitance. Is that what you meant, sir? The felled ve Febble simply bared his teeth. Rats will always scurry away from the source of fear, soldier. Damn. Um, I'll get some more rifles. Artillery is probably a good idea, too. Let's go ahead and get that. We can increase our policing force. So I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Three military factories. Um, we only have one, really. May as well get more guns. Why not? Ooh, we should probably deal with that. Um... Honestly, that is not good. <laughs> Alright, we've uh, encircled Newcastle. If we take a uh, Stoltzhafen, we'll more or less um, have control over um, this front again. And uh, let's get Let's get back to it. Strategic, uh, strategic cycles is done. Let's go ahead and get um get all train training done as well. Let's get a uh, concurrent frontal assault. So that looks pretty damn good actually. Um. Let's militarize our economy. The tense peace we had with the Germans is shattered by the invasion of our dominion with their war dogs pouring over the border. The economy of our nation must be transformed into something that can sustain our every effort to beat them back. From a nation of farmers and miners, South Africa will become a nation of soldiers and gunsmiths. We shall organize it so it may be, keep our people fed, our soldiers armed, our vehicles running, and our allies confident in our commitment to seeing victory over any and all enemy forces. 
Sounds good to me. I mean, I can't imagine that um, we got too much longer in this um, war. We'll put these guys on uh, garrison duty. There is no silence in the high belt for his broken by the crunching of boots on the sandy road through the rocks and the dust of the land without water but for that deep in the earth's embrace with soldiers fearing to step too far and to be aired vastness to be lost to be agony and solitude of the high places backed by the bleak vastness of the sky the wheat eerie americans passed through the crawl it was barely a village a collection of shacks made of rubbish and dry wood a handful of emancipated goats and sheep who gazed forlornly on the men as we entered their way into the center of the feeble settlement. Their leader, a boy with patchy fuzz on his upper lip, looked up, looked up around him into the houses and saw the, in the gaps between the planks of a sullen red faces sneering at him with a hateful eyes of conquered. Evacuate, he called once, twice. They only glared and snarled at their pig speech, and the boy felt his anger stoked at their contempt. Forward he motioned and the masked men approached with their strange machines and the villagers watched them in confusion. Without further warning, fire poured through the shacks went up, and the shacks went up in flames. Screaming, they began to flee, clutching babies and valuables, crashing to the ground as shots ripped through the air, tearing at the sunburned skin and fountains of blood. Within minutes, the all-consuming fire to cleanse the village from the face of the earth. All that remained was the ash on the bodies and the boy commander gazing upon the destruction he had brought with far faraway eyes. Sifting through the remains, the American found no evidence of him bore cache. He'd come so found, far to found, find. As the dry thunder boomed over a high veld, they turned and returned the way they had come, between the jagged rocks, back down the sandy road. Anger's like fire. It burns all clean. Well, I think it's time to call it here. We'll leave it on that note. Thank you for watching as always though. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. The Civil War is not over yet. God damn. If you, um, if not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of my content in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more uploads every weekday. As always, every Saturday, every Saturday, if you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of that, that sort, go ahead and leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and I appreciate any and all feedback you kind folks might have for me. If you want to send a few bucks my way, if you are so inclined, go ahead and um, check out my Patreon down link below. I, um, well, let me, um, Garrison, where's Garrison? Area Defense, that works too. I have him deal with that. Um, yeah, if you uh, can't or you don't want to donate, I understand, but I appreciate it. If you could also have a Discord down link below, if you want to check that out, we can chat, play games, and just have a fun old time generally. So, yeah, that's about it, folks. About, um, yeah, my name is Doggo33. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.